We do have a big news story first, and it involves Everton, Kieran. And I have to say, when this story broke, you seem to be a rare voice of calm in a sea of social media panic from journalists and Everton fans. Yes, uh, the, the reason why, I mean, and, and I did interviews for Five Live, Sky, Talk Sport, and Radio Merseyside. Um, I I was trying to do what I, I believe was uh, the, the role of civil servants when uh, addressing Gordon Brown, which was to create a poo sandwich, which is you, you start off with a bit of good news, then you put in all of the bad stuff, and then at the end you say, well, well but you know, we'll have another little bit of slice of good news. <clears throat> so um, I, guess, I guess I'll try to do that, um, because I don't, I don't want it to be all doom and gloom, but I've got to be said, you know, here the negatives are far greater than the positives. So what has happened is that the the Freed King group, who were the second set of preferred bidders in respect of acquiring Everton Football Club, um, in, in particular acquiring the 94% of shares owned by Farhad Mashiri, um, they formally withdrew from the process on Friday. Um, now, I've got to be honest, this story had been leaked um, on Tuesday stroke Wednesday to certain parties, um, but not the football club itself. You know, this is how bad things were, that um, some people were aware that the deal had collapsed, but Everton hadn't realised that themselves. So you know, I think that's indicative of just how bad things were between uh, Farhad Mashiri and um, uh, and. And, and Friedkin Group. Now, the good news is that Friedkin were initially very positive about the deal, and on the back of that, they've lent Everton Football Club two hundred million pounds. That's allowed Everton to pay off one of their existing significant loans. Um, that was to MSP Capital, and has left a little bit of money over in terms of um, paying the day-to-day -day bills also helping the club to be able to meet, reach its commitments with regards to the stadium in in the short term. So that's that's the good bit. Um, the bad bit was, well, why have the Freed King Group pulled out? And um, you know, they already own Roma. Um, they are used to dealing with complex deals. Freed King himself is a very successful and very wealthy man. And sadly, it comes back to um, 777 partners. Um, and also, I think Farhad Mashiri has to take a, a large uh, slice of the responsibility here as well. Um, 777 are owed around about £200 million. And when they effectively dropped out of the bidding, their loan was not due for repayment. And also, they are the junior lender. So therefore, they cannot be repaid until... There's another lender called, it all gets very complicated, there's another lender called Rights and Media Funding, who are the most senior lender. Rights and Media Funding themselves are a curiosity because this is a company which is based in Cheshire, which has no employees and yet has a loan book of over £300 million. And when you go into Rights and Media Funding's account, which um, a, few, a few of us have a habit of doing, um, they seem to have borrowed money from that, that paragon of transparency, the Bahamas. So some money's come from the Bahamas, has gone to a company which has no employees, which has then lent the money to Everton. So they've got first dibs, I think that's a technical phrase, on, on about £200 million from Everton. Um, then it looks like the Friedkin group are second. Friedkin, their loan doesn't have to be repaid for another 12 months. Then we've got this issue with 777. And the problem with 777 is they are having their arse sued off by a number of people. And we've discussed the reason why. The accusation is that 777 have borrowed money effectively under false pretenses. That could lead to lawsuits in the US. So under normal circumstances, I think Friedkin were going to go to 777 and say, look, you're not going to get your money back. How about we offer you 60%, you 50% know, of what you're owed? And if you don't want it, then you're going to have to go and wait an awfully long time. Um, if there's going to be potential lawsuits around, it could be that the US government or the litigants in those lawsuits will say, well, hold on, that money 
is something to do with us. So therefore, you can't sign a deal with 777 because it might not be in our best interests. So there's a, there's a large complication there. And what's happened is that Friedkin's lawyers have said, walk away. You, know, you, you don't know what you're, what you're letting yourself in for. Um, if you try to get indemnities from Farhad Mashiri, well, they're pretty worthless because for all we know, he's skin. You know, and and nobody, nobody seems to know how much Farhad Mashiri's got. So there's, there's that as one issue. Secondly, I, I think Mashiri seemed to think that his shares were worth something. He's been looking for 50 million quid because, again, some people seem to think he's skint and therefore he needs every penny he can get hold of. Since Because since his friend Alicia Usmanov was declared persona non grata in the UK, the, the money coming from Mashiri to Everton seems to have dried up. The problem is that the shares aren't worth 50 million quid in all probability. They're probably worth... A pound. You know, if, if, you, if, if, some, if, if, if I was Mashiri and somebody offered me a pound and I could walk away from Everton, I, I'd probably snap the hand off. But if I've got no money, then there's a f further complication. So I, I think Friedkin said, we're going to Herriton Club with a load of debt and potentially some lawsuits. We've got somebody wanting 50 million quid for shares that we don't think are worth 50 million quid. Why put ourselves through this? Um, so that's the position. Um, on top of that, whilst Everton have got some cash in because it looks like they're selling Onana to, to Villa, so they get 50 million quid there. They've sold Ben Godfrey. They've sold one or two other players. So they've got a bit of cash which has come in, which is all good. Um, there's still the ongoing work taking place on the stadium. Um, Matt Slater, our, our good friend, um, he reckons there's probably 70 to 80 million pounds of outstanding fees in terms of finishing off the stadium that money's got to come from somewhere so that adds on to, to the plate um so that's that's where we are at present the deal was just too complicated and looking too expensive for freakin to want to take on who does this leave as potential owners there there is an offer of around about 400 million pounds from somebody in london but that's for everything and and, and there's four hundred million pounds for a club that's got debts of six hundred million. Those numbers don't add up. John Texter could he could he put in an appearance again? Well, potentially, but there's no sign of him selling his interest in Palace. So yeah, that's going to be complicated, and that's going to be long winded. And again, if I was a lawyer advising him, I'd say, "Well, are you sure you know what you're you're, you're walking into here." Um, and, and there could be other potential interested parties who are probably sitting on their hands at present because they might feel that they don't want to inherit any of this and they'd perhaps like to just go and buy the assets of the club off a potential administrator. Now, that's a long way off. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not suggesting we're anywhere near that at present, but it, it's complicated, it's messy, and it, it's not good news. Everton have got enough money to pay this month's wage bill, to pay next month's wage bill, and so on. But once we get into sort of towards the end of the year, you're not quite sure how, thing, how good things are going to be.